Okay, in this video I want to actually um, look at consumer bundles and I want to develop an indifference curve and then use indifference curves to show how, uh, how these preferences relate. So if we, uh, if we start out with some level of Coke and pizza, those being our two goods, let's say I start out here with six Cokes and Oh, one pizza. This would be slice of pizza, I suppose. Let's make this bundle this purple color. Uh, we'll call this bundle A. Now, with six Cokes and one piece of pizza, that's a lot of Coke and very little pizza. So I'm fairly satisfied on the Coke end, but probably not very satisfied on the pizza end. So uh, if I wanted to increase my pizza intake, I'd probably be willing to give up a decent amount of Coke in order to get that second piece of pizza. So, uh, whoops. Uh, so, yeah. So, in order to get that second piece of pizza, maybe I'm willing to give up two additional Cokes to get that second piece of pizza. So, let's call this bundle uh, four Cokes and two pieces of pizza bundle B. Now, continuing this stra uh, strain of train of thought, um, if I wanted to get that third piece of pizza, I'm probably willing to give up less Coke. And so, in this case, maybe uh, because my Coke supply is less and my pizza supply is more than it used to be, maybe I'm willing to only give up one Coke uh, to get one piece of pizza. So this would be bundle C. And then maybe to get the next piece of pizza, I'm only willing to give up about half a half a Coke. So this would be bundle D. And then uh, just one more for completeness here. Uh, maybe to get the next piece of pizza, I'm only willing to give up one quarter of a Coke to get that. And we'll call this uh, bundle E. Okay, so now if I were to connect, connect these points with a curve, not a very nice curve, but a curve nonetheless, um, this is what we call an indifference curve. We'll call this indifference curve I1. Uh, an indifference curve essentially lays out all of the bundles for which you as a consumer would be indifferent in consuming. So all of these bundles would provide the same level of satisfaction to a specific consumer. And if we analyze each the change between each bundles here, between each bundle, uh, you'll notice that here at the very top, of course, we were willing to exchange uh, two Coke for one piece of pizza, one Coke for one piece of pizza, one half Coke for one piece of pizza, and then lastly, one fourth Coke for one piece of pizza. This is what we call um, that fourth property that I discussed in the previous video. This is the diminishing diminishing uh, marginal rate of substitution, or the idea that uh, the more I get of one good, the less I have the other good. So the more a pizza I get and the less Coke I have, the less willing I'm to, I am to exchange more Coke for pizza, uh, so I, I would exchange less and less. Uh, so that marginal rate of substitution, Coke for pizza, is going to decline if I look at the ratio of Coke for pizza. Uh, the quantity of Coke I'm willing to give up to get more pizza is declining, uh, so this whole ratio is going to decline. Okay. So uh, now that we've developed that, let's look at um, some additional cases that uh, prove our properties that we talked about in the last video. 
Uh, I don't need to prove completeness. It's something that we're going to take on faith. Um, but uh, let's take a look at... Let's take a look at, if I have multiple indifference curves here, I'll call this I1, I'll call this I2. Um, let's suppose that I have uh, two, let's suppose I have this bundle of Coke and pizza that we'll call A, this bundle B, and this bundle C. Because A, B, and C are on the same indifference curve, then I know that A is indifferent to B, B is indifferent to C, and C, I'm sorry, A, by the transitive property, is indifferent to C. Okay, um, now, the more is better property would come into play here. Uh, if I've drawn this Assume this is a straight line, first of all. Uh, if I drew point D over here, you'll notice that if this is a straight line, I have the exact same amount of Coke in A and D, but in D I have more pizza. So D proves, or not proves, D shows this more is better property. Uh, I could also look at it from this angle. Uh, at point E, I have the same amount of pizza as A, but I have more Coke. So more Coke at E, more pizza at D. E and D are... D and is indifferent to E. So that what we're showing here is that the more is better property. And um, this leads us to a conclusion that if I'm on a higher indifference curve, um, these two points, D and E, are uh, yield the same level of satisfaction. So what I'm showing here then is that any point on this indifference curve, I2, is preferred to uh, point A on indifference curve I1. And because the bundle A is indifferent between B and C, then E and D are preferred to B and C or any other point on this indifference curve I1 so that a higher indifference curve generally leads to a higher level of satisfaction. And that shows this uh, more is better. So that if I drew this third I indifference curve here, I3, and maybe I put uh, point F up here, I would note that F is preferred to E, and of course E is preferred to A, or B, or C. Therefore, F is also preferred to A by the transitive property, and what we show here is then that being on this highest indifference curve I3 is preferred to being on any point in I2, which is preferred to being at any point on I1. Okay, so that's uh, that's about it for the indifference curves for now. And the next one we will on the next video we will incorporate a consumer budget constraint.